All right, Peter, we start with you this week. Are the Democrats just being too giddy thinking this election's in the bag? I think a little bit, but I have never seen two more disastrous weeks than I've seen over the past, you know, President Trump had. I mean, this has been one terrible news day after another, one pathetic performance after another that raises questions not only about his judgment, but about his health, about his mental health. I mean, this has been a tough two weeks. It has been a tough two weeks. But Thurgood, did, does this mean Biden's got it locked up for November? Uh, unfortunately, absolutely not. But I'm going to sit back and continue to be giddy for a little bit longer because I, I don't think that I can imagine two worse weeks for anybody, even this character. And I, I, it's just been an appalling tour de force in terms of uh, as Peter said, the, the decision making, his performance, and the questions about his performance and his abilities and his faculties, uh, uh, all these other things are catching up to him with uh, people who are widely, wildly and widely respected coming out, having been former appointees, and not only questioning his uh, ability to function and his qualifications uh, and his capacity to govern, but questioning even the people who he chooses to hire and the quality of his hiring process. And if you look around at who's left, it's not exactly the A-plus team by any measure. So at least for these, these couple of weeks, it's, it's, there's cause to be giddy in terms of the quality of the performance of what's been exposed, but there's still 130 plus days left before the election. There are a lot of things that can happen. And uh, I don't put it past them to figure out all sorts of ways to make this very complicated. And that is all stuff that's controllable. And then, of course, in any given year, especially with the global environment, anything can happen that's unexpected in terms of external things to uh, cause us concern. So it'll be giddy and enjoy it, but yeah. got to But, but let's, let's be honest. How much would you have paid to have been on Air Force One <laughs> as they did the early flyover to look at the thousands of people that were massing outside uh, the 19,000 seat arena where the president you know, was going to give them a, a direct speech as well. And as they dipped down, you know, at 5,000 feet and tilt the wing down, they look down and they see and hear crickets. <laughs> Nada. And can you imagine what he said? I mean, who oh. did he, can you imagine, can you imagine if you were the late Brad Pascal? <laughs> in the plane? Right. No, because well, they all wanted to be on the plane for the first trip. I'll say this, right. the, 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 line, oh, this is the line at the Tulsa rally that stood out to me the most because like the testing and everything, not unexpected that he would say something like that. He said his performance, Trump described his own performance at the Tulsa rally as average. I mean, if, he's like, why would you want to ever say that to an audience that your performance is average? I just, I, he was way, way off. The audience was off. It was small. It was just, it was, I agree with you. It was a terrible day. 